Not not really a whole lot more to add from what I said yesterday. It was it was a, uh, a plan in the first half. We felt like our, our guys were doing a good job executing and and playing the right way. The play we thought the, the way we thought we were going to have to play to win the game. And um, unfortunately, those those touchdowns starting with the, I mean the turnovers starting with the one in the first half, first two possessions, the second half is is where that game got away from us. And so uh, there was a lot to be pleased with that happened in the game, but. Um, Ultimately, we lost the game by 21 points, and so it got ugly there at the end, and that part was frustrating. And um, so now we, we move on to, to Miami, who's a, a team that's been playing hard and found a way to win some games. And um, so it'll be a, a good opportunity for us to go out there and, and uh, attack this week with the same energy our guys have attacked every week. You know, I don't think anybody um, can watch our guys and say that any of them have given up. That's that's one area where we've uh, been proud, despite our record. Our guys go out there and and uh, play with every ounce of energy they can, and they keep supporting each other, and um, they keep fighting for these wins, and we're going to keep fighting this Sunday. After reviewing the tape, do you still feel as though Andy Dalton's four interceptions were 50-50 balls? I think they were They were shots we needed to take. At those points in the game, um, We need. they were one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and um, you know whether the location could be better by an inch, whether a guy could be more detailed with, with how he attacks the route or attacks the ball. Um, those are all conversations we have with our players, but um, those are one-on-ones. It comes down to, to guys being in a position to make a play. And the worst-case scenario that can happen is it's incomplete. You know, and that, that's what happens. When you're playing man coverage, you put a ball in the air, um, you just got to trust that, that the worst thing that's going to happen is going to be incomplete. And unfortunately, um, that didn't happen. We were not in there today. No, we, we let the players get out of the building today, um, so we have not met with them yet. In regard, in, from us. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we, we communicate. It's a, you know, it's certainly there's. I, I wish I wouldn't have phrased it like that. To be quite honest with you, um, because you're emotional after a game like that, and and then you watch the tape, and and there's, we just got to correct the, the technique, you know, and that's what the conversation needs to be, and so. Um, you know, it's a room of good character. Guys, it's important to them. They want to do it the way you want it done. And so uh, certainly I, I have regret in how I phrased that yesterday. And um, so it'll be a very candid conversation in that sense, you know, accountable for for everything that we can do better as a group. You know, Boyd was pretty candid yesterday after the game as well. I mean, what did you make of his comments that he spoke to Francis yesterday? Um, that's between us. But, again, I'm, I'm, we're all emotional. We, it was a game that we all felt like we come out of the gates and, and we're playing well and we're doing things we need to do. And then when you don't win and it gets away from you the way it got away from us, it's frustrating for everybody. And um, TB is a guy I respect the hell out of. And, and uh, those conversations are always amongst us. How come you gave everybody the day off today? It was just it's that point in the season where everyone just needs to be fresh um, as we go into these last two games. And, uh, just felt it was necessary to, to give the guys the day off and come back Wednesday ready, focused, and, and be ready to prepare for Miami. That one of those things where maybe you were waiting for another big That would have been the better way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's that point in the year where guys just uh, need a chance to just get healthy. Everyone, everyone's got nicks and bruises at this point, so it's good to give them, give them some time to, to clear their heads and come back ready to go on Wednesday. You guys are pretty big in, in the negative and turnover margin. Is that a product of being – Forced to try to make plays, and then maybe the other side of the ball, just not being around the ball enough to create some stuff. I, I think that's a good way to put it. It's um, ours tend to come when when we are behind, of course, and and we start having to push the ball a little bit more, and it happens. Um, I think on the other side, it is we got to keep punching at the ball and getting it out. You saw it happen in the second half. Sometimes it leads to missed tackle. You know, it's 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 a double-edged sword. There, you you reinforce it. You want it. They try to do it, and then, you know, sometimes it gives up another two or three yards. And so, um, it's just an area we got to continue to improve on. You haven't often been critical of players in here. Um, yeah. Is that a conscious thing? And do they hear it from you in, in the meeting? Uh, it, we're, we're always very honest, you know, and it's constructive criticism. And so. Um, again, we we don't have we're fortunate that we don't have players that are are trying to go against the things we're asking them to do, and so um, that's why I'm upset with myself when I when I get emotional. I say something stupid like I did yesterday, and, and we expect the same thing from our players as well. And so, um, 
conscious, yes, uh, but we always want to be up front and honest with our assessment of how they play and how they can improve. And um, I think that our staff has done a really good job of that this year. Right. Right. Is that something as a coach that you have to coach guys on, or is that something you rely on them individually to figure out? Uh, it, it's it is collective. It's something that uh, we have to create some momentum for ourselves first of all. It's one thing to stand in front of everybody and talk about it. Hey, we can't accept this. We can't do this. Um, that's an easy thing for all of us to say. And so what's the approach that we're taking to fix it? And I, I do feel like um, that the leadership has only gotten better as the season's gone on. I saw a lot of examples of it yesterday in the game and on the sidelines amongst players that we count on. And, and it's just something we have to continue to make clear in all areas of, of how we approach a game week that we got to improve. Instead of just saying, hey, we can't accept the losing. No one accepts losing. No one wants to lose. No one goes out there and tries to lose. So how do we, how do we fix that? How do we improve in all areas? And, and how are we critical of ourselves as coaches? How are we critical of ourselves as players? And how we work together to make sure we can fix it? And, um, and it's going to take four quarters of all that. It's, I'm sure we put together halves we can be, be proud of. But it hasn't been a full game. And that's why our record is what it is. No, no, none that I want to share, but just things to be encouraged by. Guys I've mentioned over the course of the year, um, reinforcing it, you know. And so that's th those are positives that you see in week 16 where um, that's really not the norm for teams that are in our situation that just reinforces the culture and the guys buying in and, and the connected team that we've always talked about. And uh, we're very confident that it's going to pay off for us. Carl also mentioned the culture yesterday. Do you still see that? I know the record doesn't show up, but yeah. the belief in that culture that you've been trying to build here, yeah, that, that, to be tough. I mean, you still yeah, that's not just words coming out of my mouth in April and in August and occasionally. Uh, though that's that's what we try to build daily and reinforce daily because um, that's got to be our foundation. And, and then um, we start to execute our schemes better and all the things that come with that. We start to play situationally better. We start to win the turnover margin. Um, and th those things will all all come together, and it's been we we see improvement in a lot of different areas. It's just all got to come together for the consistency of the entire team for four quarters. Has, has Joe done enough over the last few weeks to maybe be somebody you want to that, that you think that this franchise can build around going forward? Do you think he's? I think Joe's a, a great running back, and he's done the things we've asked him to do. In these last couple of weeks, we've really leaned on him. He's done a great job um, in combination with with Gio and those guys up front. Um, and so I, I certainly am very happy he's here and that we have him. What did you make of Belichick saying yesterday that he might be one of the best running backs in the league? I'm sorry, say that one what did time. What you make yesterday of Belichick saying that Mixon might be one of the best running backs? Yeah, he's a great back. I mean, it's it's you hear a lot of coaches that are complimentary of him. How aware are you of draft position? Uh, I know that it sorts itself out here in two weeks, you know, and so that's that's all that matters. You know, it's we, we just got to focus on winning these games and then – and then the off season is the off season, and we deal with it when it comes. Do you address that at all with players, even just to say, "Don't listen to any of that." How do you, do you approach that at all with players? The idea of no, you no, you have a sense of things um, that are going on outside the building that you need to address with the players. That's not something that we talk about. It's our, uh, they do a great job. They're they're focused on coming back and winning the game. It's important to them. And every every time I stand in front of the team and we talk. Um, you, you can just feel the energy and see where their head's at. And, and it's on trying to beat the opponent that we have coming up in six, five, four, whatever many days it is. It's those guys, the focus is on the right things. Does draft position come up even just in your morning debriefing with Mike and Duke and all them of like, hey, this is where we're going. We, we talk about all things that concern the, the organization. And um, during the season, it's, it's focused on the things that help us from week to week. Well, I, I think um, the guys won what six Super Bowls, um, however many MVPs. You know that that's a that's a guy that um, 
does things like that to a franchise like that, you know, when he's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the football game. And so when you have players of that magnitude, it's it's something every fan base rallies around, you know, and it doesn't always have to be quarter. It can be any position. And, um, you know, I, I saw it with Aaron Donald in L.A. You know, those, that crowd fed off of Aaron Donald as well. So it happens with, with you know, players who are um, – you know, all decade type players, you know, that's not surprising to see something like that. Do you think a, a quarterback is, is that important as, as much as people outside of football like to make it is? Do you think it's that way? It's I, I think it's the most difficult position to play in all of sports. That's my one opinion. Um, obviously, it's always about the team. There's no doubt about it. But I think you're, it's, it's silly if I say that that's not, that's not one that makes the team go. And um, so that's, I think that's just a kind of a standard observation of, of that position. Yeah, given the way Miami has approached the season, they offloaded a lot of talent um, kind of early in the year. Do you feel like this is a game that you must win, um, given, you know, for you to establish whatever you want moving forward against a team like this? Is this a team that you should come away with the victory? I feel like that every week. That every week um, we go into it thinking we're going to win and that we have a good plan in place and that our players believe and have executed during the week. And, um, it just it hasn't happened yet. So this week is no different in that regard. Speaking of the plan and just the way yesterday started, um, how as a play caller, how many plays do you script to start a game? You you look at so many different situations. I mean, if if uh, we we like we like to talk about early calls, calls we'd like to get off early um, for a lot of different reasons. It, that reason could change each game on why we need those early calls out there. What we're looking for, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and then really the way you build a game plan, it's so situation, get back on track, you know, um, third down situational, red zone fringe situational, red zone goal line, short yardage. So it's broken down in so many different areas that um, scripting is, is kind of a strange way to look at it because you've, you've talked about so many different situations you could be in and what your first call is going to be, what your second call is going to be. And so uh, we certainly spend the whole week previewing how the game is going to play out. Um, what calls you like in certain areas, and that could carry over all the way deep into the third quarter because you haven't been in that situation yet that you talked about all week hasn't shown up until middle of the third quarter. Well, bam, now here it is. Here's the call, you know, and so, um, and that can change as the as the flow of the game goes as well. But um, it's something that I, I we we spend a lot a heck of a lot of time talking about. With, with short yards, third and one, fourth and one, is. Is that a feel thing too, as far as how you're going to attack it formation-wise, or mm -hmm. is, is that more of a philosophy thing? Where hey, we want to we want to be under center on on third and one. We want to shotgun fourth and one. Uh, it, it's it's a game week approach. You know, it's not. Um, certainly, we have plays that we believe in on a short yardage standpoint. You got to look at your self scout tendencies. You got to look at things that have been successful against the, the defense you're you're playing against. Um, I do know that you know we we really went one for two yesterday and felt like we should have been two for two, you know, in the short yard situations, and that's just not the way it played out. When you, I mean, uh, when you get the script of play, you say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to run it eight the first eight, play, uh, first eight plays for a touchdown. So obviously, we're going to adjust Yeah, you're, you're, you're right about that. Yep, it's, it's a, as the drive gets going and you, and you get a feel for um, how you guys are coming off the ball, and, and um, that's something – similar to the Arizona game is what that felt like you know as you start the game you start to feel okay this is something we can we can continue to build on this first drive and then and then make the adjustments after the drive Gilmore said yesterday that he knew exactly what routes the boys were running I guess based on by the pre-snap he knew exactly what was going to happen is that concerning well I'd like to hear specific examples as I watched him cover him what? which which examples exactly Okay. Yeah, I don't have any comment on that. How, how excited, I mean, you're going back to Miami, um, you know, now as a head coach, I mean, and a lot of your guys were, were in Miami before. Um, you know, what's, what's this week going to be like for you and going to the place that's familiar? I mean, is this one that you kind of circled? Uh, no, on? I wouldn't say circled. Um, I, they have great people there um, that are still there in, the, in that organization. Um, people that I got really close to. I mean, you talk about um, – equipment managers, uh, strength staff, you know, they had a bunch of really good people in Miami that over the four years I was there really felt the connection to. And I, I'm sure all the guys on our staff that work there do as well. And so 
Um, certainly good memories there. You know, it was a good four years and um, never been back. Never seen the new stadium, really, the adjustments they made to it. So, um, yeah, certainly a place that we have we have good memories of. It went kind of under the radar yesterday, but Jermaine Pratt had a career high in sacks. I mean, sorry, tackles. What have you seen from him? Continued improvement. And, and there needs to be continued improvement, you know. So, um, it's again. I I, th I feel like I sit here and say it every week. But our young players, there's good and bad every week, and things that they got to improve on. But um, you certainly see a lot of the qualities that we thought we were going to get when we took him. Um, it's good that he's been getting to play a ton of snaps here this last half of the season. And um, but he he does have to continue to uh, correct the mistakes, you know. And and uh, there's a lot to grow on, but there's certainly a lot of positives that we're excited about. How much, more do, you, how much do you think the injury set John Ross back? And is it at that point of the year where even if he starts to get ramped up, the season comes to an end again, and it's almost like he's got to get restarted maybe again in the offseason? He's, you know, it's a lot of the guys that are, are, they're all new to the system. It's been a year, and so they all need the reps. So he's missed however many weeks he missed there, um, eight weeks, and you certainly would like all the receivers to have had those eight weeks. It's tough because it's it's such a physical position where you need the, the muscle memory of running the routes. And so when you haven't gotten that, because he missed a lot of time, obviously he missed the, the majority of the off season and then and then missed those eight weeks and then in the season. So that's that's tough because it's not just, right, I'm going to get back out there and be perfect. You know, it, it takes um, the work an individual and the routes on air and all that stuff to be familiarized with what we want him to do. And so, um, I, you know, like any skill player, it's tough when you miss that chunk of the season and come back and expect to hit it just right back in stride. So he's going to need these last two weeks. It's good to, it's good he's going to get these last two weeks. Yeah, I, I love it, you know, and it's um, – I love the camaraderie of the people we have in this building, uh, being able to compete every Sunday. I mean, that's that's what you dream about. That's why you do it. It's it's obviously if you're a competitor, you're frustrated that um, the season hasn't gone the way it has because uh, you're in it to win football games, you're in it to win championships. You, you always have this vision of um, – celebrating the championships with the, the, the city of Cincinnati. Th those are things that um, you certainly visualize, but there's a lot of work that goes into it before you get to that point. And it doesn't happen overnight as much as you want it to. Um, you have to be consistent with the work you put in every single day and build the foundation the right way and, and continue to build up the team. And so we have a lot of people that believe in the same vision and are willing to put in the hard work and um, we're going to get there, and I'm, I'm really excited. That, those are the things that excite me is despite the season that we've had, um, it's, we, we know that the future is very bright and, and cannot wait to continue to put in the work to, to get us to where we all want to be. That's not stuff we concern ourselves with right now. We're focused on the team that we have and uh, winning the game this week at Miami. What is your optimism level for AJ Green on Sunday? <laughs> we almost made it. Uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to him again. Uh, you know, uh, I'll get this. He'll be in the building, and so again, we'll discuss what what the plan will be for him. You know, starting with Wednesday, if he's able to go on Wednesday, and we'll go from there. We, we were actually I don't fault you for asking. We were actually fighting. I got you. I got you. Okay.